So welcome participants. This time um, I realize many of you are first timers and you don't know possibly Professor Asha Kaur or me. Uh, this is Professor Sanjay Varma from IIM Ahmedabad. And uh, this is the 10th talk in this series. Uh, it started as a response to COVID because people were at home. We thought let's do something uh, meaningful. We started these talks and uh, the number of people are increasing in every talk. And today we have Professor Asha Kaur. Professor Asha Kaur, by now you may be aware, is professor uh, at IIM Ahmedabad. She's from communications area. And uh, she did her doctorate in stylistics. She has authored many, many books, uh, not one, two, but I think six or seven books. And currently she's working on corporate reputation also and on crisis management, CSR, et cetera. She publishes in many journals and uh, you know conferences. She has wide interest uh, in you know corporate and dig digital communication, politeness, etc. She writes many cases also, and she has won many many awards. And she was also awarded the citation for 100 most dedicated professors. And then uh, Professor Indra Parikh, 50 women in education leaders by World Education Congress in 2018. She has also been recognized as one of the 50 Indian management thinkers who has made impact on theory of management and practice in 2015. And then there are many, many other awards. Each minute I talk about Asha, it will take away the time from you and Asha. So Asha, Oops. I won't discuss uh, so more yeah. no than this. And Asha, it's all yours, 45 minutes to 60 minutes, followed by question answers. I would request participants to put themselves on mute. And if possible, uh, don't write anything on chat unless it's absolutely necessary. Thank you, Asha. Please, you may start. So, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for coming and joining uh, me in this talk. This is something that I've really been looking forward to. So, uh, not for any other reason. You know, like I did see someone uh, uh, mention in the chat that. Uh, during this time when there's so much tension, when there's so much stress going on. So what's really going on in Mahabharata is essential. Well, to a certain extent, yes, but not completely. For that, probably we'll talk on another day about crisis and how do you really handle the crisis, but not today. Today, our focus is going to be primarily on Mahabharata. Now, there are multiple things that I'd like to talk to you about. And before we get on to the uh, actual session let me just talk to you a little about you know why do we like to talk about leadership uh, either through literature or through epics or through itihas see one of the reasons why we do that is because you get to take a look at the protagonist you get to take a look at the leader in entirety in totality see if you were to study someone's autobiography or you were to take a look at the biography it's going to be a biased perspective you don't know what happened you don't know what the circumstances are which led to a particular response which led to a particular action at a particular moment but when you start reading from literature what happens is you have the author's view the author presents the character in totality and you get to take a look at the passions, the love, the hate, the actions, the frauds, and whatever you have in mind. Everything happens at a particular moment. And you are then able to get a proper understanding of who this individual is. How did this particular person behave? Did he show leadership traits or did he or she not demonstrate leadership traits? So having set the ground, let's move on to Mahabharata. So when you take a look at Mahabharat, uh, there's been a lot of talk about it. And recently what's happened is there are lots and lots of people who are talking about Mahabharat per se and trying to link it to leadership. So when you talk about Mahabharat, why Mahabharat only? See, one of the reasons is uh, it has been said, it has been said when Mahabharat is concerned that whatever is in Mahabharat, you will find everywhere else but whatever is not there happening in the world will also not be there in Mahabharat. So which means it is comprehensive enough for us to be able to understand what is it that we would like to call out from Mahabharat. That's one. The second point I'd like to draw your attention to, you know, uh, where Mahabharat is concerned, currently the way it stands, it's at 100,000 shlokas or 
couplets. There is a little bit of difference of opinions where someone also says it's 82,000 something, but what we are definitely sure of is it is over and above 80,000 couplets, right? And if you take a look at Ramayana, Ramayana is only 24,000 shlokas. So which means this is almost three or four times the size of Mahabharata, sorry, of Ramayana. Right, and there are interpretations which have been given by multiple scholars, but there are certain things which we all know for sure, and we would like to move in that direction. For instance, you know, like we have Iravati Karve, we have Mira O'Broy, we have Devdat Patnayak, we have Mani Kuti. All these people have been writing about the characters where Mahabharat is concerned. So while there may be a wee bit of shift or change in understanding the sequence of events, but overall, an understanding of the character remains unsullied. Another point I'd like to draw your attention to before we get on to the characters in Mahabharat is, see, where our Vedic scriptures are concerned, you know, there's one thing which is really, really talked about, and that is Purusharth. When we talk about Purusharth, we are actually talking about human existence. And in this Purusha, there are four things, concepts that are talked about. Earth, calm, dharma, and moksha. Earth would be economics. Calm would be sensual pleasures. Dharma would be righteous conduct. And moksha would be nirvana or spiritual attainment. Now, it depends on us whether we would, you know, as we carry on with the talk, whether we would like to talk about these things in terms of any kind of leadership or we would not want us to uh, talk about these issues but for the time being let's just leave it at this point now when we talk about Mahabharata this is very interesting today I was thinking about it and I thought you know in Mahabharata everything is very real everything is very real even the characters are very real and why are we only talking about the characters? You take a look at anything. Uh, anything that's happening in the corporate world, be it a merger, acquisition, joint venture, be it legal compliances, ethical compliances, be it choices that are being made in certain situations. Everything seems to be happening over there in the corporate world. So it's very easy for us to relate what we are going to be talking about where Mahabharata is concerned and trying to link it to um, the leadership literature. So before we really get on or get started, here's a small exercise I'd like you all to do. Please listen very carefully to what I'm saying. I'm going to flash a screen in front of you. Please take out your mobiles. Listen, listen first to what I'm saying. There would be a site which would be given. You're supposed to log on to that site. And there's one question that's going to be given to you, right? You are supposed to answer that question. We should not take more than two to three minutes. So once I put it on, your time begins then. Okay, just a minute. Can you all see? So the question no, that I put in over here is, which no, tree? No, ma'am. Visual layer. Visual layer. A blank with there's just a question written over there. Yeah, it's visible. You can zoom it. Visible. Ah, visible, madam. Visible, visible. Visible, right now. Just click on that uh, tab which is over there. Okay. Now, expanding. Just pinch it up. Okay. It's not going down, right? What All the participants just pinch, pinch in and you can see that. Ma'am, you don't need to make any changes. It's perfect from your end. Thank you. So which three leadership traits do you think are critical in the business environment? So you have to go to www.menti.com and once you log in, it's going to ask you for the code. The code is 355691. And let's create a cloud. Let's create a cloud and see what the response is like. 
So three leadership traits, one word answer for each of the leadership traits. Come on, we're getting it. Very good. Madam, what's the code you said? It's written over there, three, five, five, six, nine, one. Sanjay, what is this scribbling happening over here? Ma'am, uh, would you mind giving me a code again, please? I've just been able to log in. Three, five, five, six, nine, one. Thank you, ma'am. Welcome. Uh, Sanjay, what is this scribbling happening over the screen? People are writing on the screen, I think. But he has annotated it. Those who are written, scribbled on it, you can remove that. Actually, you have to enter in the mobile link or mobile yes, mobile link. address, not on the computer or the lap on your laptops or wherever you are doing it. Uh, please, whoever has scribbled on the board, please remove that. Come on, we still have thirty participants, thirty to forty, seventy to eighty participants to fill it in. I am doing from my iPad, and I don't have. Okay, Payal. <laughs> so, can I answer by vocally or maybe? Uh, no, wait, wait, wait. Let's just no, get yeah, responses. Okay. Because people are already scribbling on this. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to enlarge it and share it with all of you later on. What I'm looking for is I'm just getting those points because I really don't know how to enlarge it or to get it into a printable format. Madam, zoom out, madam. It will come in large. Once you finish it, it's out to zoom out. How do I do that? I don't really don't know. I think normal can help. I think our Sanjay. Ma'am, just place help. the just place your cursor over the uh, over those words and uh, roll the cursor, roll the uh, that wheel over the mouse. Are you logged in from the uh, uh, laptop? Yes. Yes. So you can you can place both the fingers over that uh, touchpad, and you can uh, you know just zoom in. Okay, uh, open image, it save image, copy image. No, it's not zooming in. No, you have you'll have to zoom it from the that touchpad. Can, you, 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 can, the can, can you press control plus? Can you control try plus? to refresh the page? That will also help. Yeah, control Sorry, plus will work. Just try to refresh the page. Try to replace the refresh. Refresh. Refresh the page. Reload the page. Yeah. It won't help. Yeah, it won't help. You may have to just uh, press Control Plus, ma'am. Uh, okay, no, control Plus that. might work. Okay. Ma'am, it will okay. come back. Don't worry. Let's just this, because I'm getting the points that I'm looking for, and uh, there are certain things which are very critical for us, and I think we are getting those points. Ma'am, I think this is participant again. Wait, I, I'll share this cloud with you all. Uh, I need to understand how this cloud can be shared. So I'll share this cloud with all of you. But let's first get everyone to fill it in and then uh, Ma'am, as the as the host, you have the chance of actually clearing up all the clutter there. You could just say clear all uh the problem is uh, whoever is speaking, I really don't know what I say clear all. Where do I take it to? Ma'am, uh, that, that scribbling you can clear up from your end. 
uh, that's what I'm asking you. How do I clear? Uh, go to the setting. Can you please go to the settings? Ma'am, you can also give the control. Settings yeah, and then clear annotations. Go to share screen options. Then you will get the option there. Uh, disable the NO8. Just right. Yes. You know what? I think if the Sanjay sir is a host, he can also do it. Sanjay, can you do it? So Asha, I am trying to do the same, but I am not getting your screen. Therefore, I am going to advance sharing, and we have already done this setting. I don't know why this has come. Ma'am, can you do? Ma'am, can you do one thing? Just stop your screen sharing once. Yeah, stop it once, Asha, and then restart screen sharing. Okay. Yeah, and restart. That. That's best. हमारे स्कूल में छोकरा पेलो लिट्टा पड़े जी बाबा तो लिट्टा पड़े सब दैट्स फाइन या सो यू गॉट दिस नाउ द ओनली थिंग इज संजय आई डोंट नो हाउ टू एनलार्ज इट सो आई एम जस्ट गोइंग टू डू इज सम ऑफ द वन व्हिच हैज बीन रिपीटेड मैम मैम देयर आर मैम क्लिक ऑन कैन यू एक्चुअली कैन यू टाइप आउट द यूआरएल इन द चैट बॉक्स वी विल सी एट आवर डेस्कटॉप नो जस्ट क्लिक ऑन द प्रेजेंट दैट दैट विल वर्क फॉर यू can you uh, share this with us ha but i don't want you to spend too much time on this uh, and you can click on the present button on the right side it will enlarge on the present yeah. button blue color present button on the right side no something else has happened right you know what it is ha there it's come That's it. Let us stop at this. I think this is it. Right now, create this cloud. I think we need to stop now because uh, uh, we would need to read some of the points that are. Oh, I'm muted. No, no, Ash. It's okay. Go ahead. So it's very interesting. You know, many of the points that have come up over here are the ones that you would also find in Mahabharat and the characters that we're going to discuss. See, one of the reasons as to why we had the topic, leadership, vision, reality. Vision, you can see right in front. Now, reality would, of course, get reflected in a whole pile of other things where you're talking about humanity, you're talking about decisiveness, you're talking about enthusiasm, you're talking about humility. So many of the points that are there, whatever I can read, I'm talking about those points. Now, let us, for the time being, just keep it in abeyance because we can't really carry on discussion on this and we need to... move ahead to other things see when you talk about mahabharat and i did mention this to you that anything that's happening in the world is going to be found over there i wanted to add a third point over there anything that people understand globally is also what is found in mahabharat it's not only something that's happening it's not only something which is being done doable but we are also talking about the thinking of the people so the thinking matches with the way in which this text or itihas has been written so i'm sure you are aware of the fact that mahabharat is referred to as itihas it is never referred to as an epic or a poem be ramayan is concerned ramayan is a poem it here it is an itihas now i would like to begin our presentation today and i'm only going to talk about five characters i'm not going to be talking about a whole pile of characters because you know we can also talk about drona we can talk about dropadi but between you and me what i've done is i've only picked up characters that i'm really fond of or who i think would be able to talk a lot to us in terms of what are the leadership traits that they get to the table now let us begin and take a look is very interesting this entire mahabharat you know it is a treatise on how people make choices you know it's choices the kind of choices that you all make when you are working in the corporate world today we are all making choices in this stress filled covid 19 environment Now, Sartre's way back as 1946 said, "Man is condemned to be free." And the minute you say man is condemned to be free, it means that freedom. The minute you give freedom to a person, the free person has a freedom to make choices. A very simplistic example. The government said you're not supposed to move out during COVID-19. It was a simple choice. 
either you get the illness or you jolly well stay at home. There were lots of people, the brave ones who decided to venture out. Yes, uh, Praful, you've raised your hand. So there were these brave people who ventured out and you know what the result was. And that's how this entire disease seemed to be spreading all over the place. Uh, Praful, what is it that you would like to say? Praful, I can't reach you. Do I need to stop sharing for me to be able to reach Praful? Yeah, Praful. Not Again, I can't see you. Asha, I think you can continue and towards uh, the end, we'll take all questions. We've uh, finished 21 minutes. Yeah. Uh, my request to all of you would be just give me some time. Let me set the ball rolling. And then, you know, we could probably rob some time from Sanjay and take it to 5.15, right? I hope Sanjay is not listening to what I'm saying. So let's get on to the screen sharing bit. So we were talking about this. So, you know, like there's this freedom. Everyone has this kind of freedom, which necessarily means that you can make choices. So let's move on to the first character. And every time we talk about Mahabharata, there's this character who comes to mind. Now, when we're talking about Bhishma Pitama, and we talk about Bhishma Pitama, there are two or three things that come immediately to the mind. The first is him taking that vow. And what is a vow? I will not inherit the throne. And the second is I will not get married, so I will not beget children. But of course, there are other things also for which he's known, the Draupadi Chiraran. Together with that, he's also known for abducting the three ladies and getting them to the court. But today, you know, the two other things that he did, you know, that today, no one thinks about those two things. Everyone talks about him as Bhishma Pitama. And Pitama, as we all know, Pitama means father. So if he's talking about, we are talking about Bhishma Pitama, you know, is this the kind of leadership that he shows? And is this the kind of leadership that we're talking about when we go to the corporate world? See, there's something interesting that emerges where his character is concerned. At the time when he dies, it is said, that's what Iravati Karve says, uh, I'm being a little restrictive in taking up, uh, you know, the original text. I've taken it all up from Iravati Karve, Yuganta. So she says he was somewhere close to 90 or 100 at that particular moment. But of course, he demonstrated generalship, very good generalship. When he was there, of course, what he did was he did not uh, attack. He did not attack the Pandavas. Of course, they were his favorites. So Arjun, of course, was a favorite of everyone, but we'll not get on to Arjun right now. We're taking a look at Bhishma Pitama. Now, when you take a look at Bhishma Pitama, there are multiple legal issues that are there. There are multiple ethical issues that are there. You know, it's something like when he gets the three ladies, abducts the three ladies. It's something like an acquisition that is happening. You have mergers and acquisitions. It's something like an acquisition that is happening. One of the acquisitions goes for a toss. When he has Draupadi over there and the Cheer Haran is taking place, do you think if he would have raised his voice or he would have said, what the heck, man, people wouldn't have stopped? But at that time, it is said that he was engaged in a legal discussion on the right of the husbands who had already lost their rights of individuality and then become servants. Many blemishes to his character. But then, at the end of the day, he's still referred to as a leader. And people, I mean, you might as well turn around and ask me, why is he referred to as a leader? The very fact that he's been given this moniker of Pitama. Pitama means father, right? Now, when he's been given this moniker, then there's definitely going to be something that he possesses which probably rides higher than anything else. See, at the start, when we talked about Mahabharat being real and by Jolly being real, more real than life itself. Like any real... Conference is being recorded. Like any real man, he too had his flaws. But what we need to learn where Bhishma Pitama is concerned you know, he sacrificed. He didn't think for a minute. He just kind of sacrificed. He didn't want to become a king because he was in love with his father. And he said, okay, you go ahead and you get married to the lady you love. 
probably that is what made him, you know, look really superior in the eyes of other people. However, however, on the other side, there's something that needs to be considered. You know, you may be a very magnanimous leader. You may be a very self-sacrificing leader, right? But what is critical for you is also to remain amicable and flexible. Your first lesson in leadership. If you become rigid, there have been some people, you know, in the political sphere across the globe saying they're not going to share our intellectual and um, intellectual capital and resources with WHO. I'm not going to take names. And WHO said, we do not need the intellectual capital and resources from this country, but the country is not willing to give it. The rigidity that was involved. Right. And that is what robs you of some of your leadership traits. Now, together with that, there's another point that I would like to raise over here. Conference is being recorded. Leadership is concerned. What we have to keep in mind is, you know, the nature of the person who's there as the helm of affairs. So it is only said, if we really want to take a look at a total leadership experience, the leader needs to be whole, real, and innovative. Now, if you to go take a look at Bhishma Pitama, he kind of, he kind of did not subscribe to either being whole or being innovative. Real? Yes, he was. We may want to take a look at him as a real individual. Now, what we, the lesson that we learn from Bhishma Pitama is, you know, here is a principled man, but life, if you take a look at life, life does not fall in the black. Conference is being black. recorded. There are gray shades as well. So when we talk about the gray shades, you know, you have a principled approach. But then when you're talking about a principled approach, what is important is there should be a dash of pragmatism that is thrown into it. I all the time keep talking about this is right, this is good, this is how it should be done. But if I'm not able to cover my principles uh, I, I, with pragmatism, principles are always there at the core. That is, you understand the context in its entirety. You cannot have the same kind of behavior in all contexts. Circumstances are going to be different. The basic purpose that we need to understand when you're talking about leadership is what is my perspective? I decided to follow an authoritative style of leadership in context X. And I say, this is the same style of leadership that I'm going to replicate in all other contexts. It's just not possible. It's just not possible. So, <clears throat> Bhishan Pitama's life teaches us principles, yes, but with some pragmatism. Look at life in its entirety. Self-sacrifice, yes, but learn to make compromises. See, the reason as to why people let him go get along with all that he was trying to do is, you know, when you make self-sacrifices, as Professor Manikuti says, you become unaccountable. Something like Gandhiji. So he made so many sacrifices and towards the end when he started, when he started kind of getting a little shaky, if I may, you know, people were more tolerant. It's something like a CSR. You do something good and it's a security net for you and people are more tolerant of what you need to be doing. But, but let's just take on, yeah, move on uh, to the other characters. But before we move on, from Bhishma, let's take a look at what Socrates said. And I think this is where Bhishma Pitama failed and by jolly the way he failed. Socrates said, the unexamined life is not worth living for a man. Bhishma Pitama never got an opportunity to turn back and look at what he had done. If you take a look after each character, I have one R. 
because at the end, I'm trying to create a model of five R's, which can be a takeaway for you for trying to build leadership traits. So where Vishen Pitama is concerned, I would say what he really missed out on was on reinventing, reinventing the wheel. Let's move on to the next character, Karn by Jolly. I love that character. I really love that character. His entire life was a search for his identity. Throughout, he kept saying, who am I? Uh, you know, and where Bhishan Pitama's character is also concerned, there are contradictory stories. In, sorry, in Karn's character, there are contradictory stories. So on one side, you see when God appears you, and asks for his Kavach and Kundal, you see him ripping the Kavach and Kundal and giving it to God. Imagine, God's also scared of this kind of man. That's only one side of Karn. On the other side, you see him inciting Dushasan to get Draupadi to the court. On the other side, you see him kill a 16-year-old Abhimanyu who enters into the chakra view and cannot come out. On the other side, you see him refuse Kunti. All throughout, he's been in search of his identity. But when she comes and she says, I'm willing to own you, come and join me. He's not willing to go. He says, if you, if the war, when the war ends, you will still have five sons. Either it's going to be me or it's going to be Arjun. You know, he was cursed by almost everyone. What did Parshuram say? You will forget all that you've learned at the time when you need it most. To be very honest, I don't know about you. But when I read Iravati Karve and she describes the scene when his wheel got stuck in the mud. You know, it was not that ordinary mud, it was a wet mud, wet by blood of all the people who had died. He gets down, he's taking down off his, he's trying to take out the wheel. And that's the time when Krishna urges Arjun to shoot. He requests, he pleads, he says, this is not a Kshatriya Dharma. Right? But then, you know, I felt very bad. I felt very bad because personally, if you take a look at me, I love people with competency. I love people with that kind of skill set. And by jolly, he did. Then where exactly did he falter? He faltered in not being able to come to a conclusion as to what exactly is his identity. See, whenever you begin a quest, a search, you should know where and when to end that quest. If you carry on in that search, what is it going to yield? See, there was, he was a Sutputra. He wanted to be a Kshatriya. There was, in fact, there are many characters, Ashwatthama as well, who was a Brahmin and wanted to be a Kshatriya. See, satisfaction is what is critical for leadership, to understand leadership. Am I satisfied with what I have? You know, for instance, if you take a look at a lot of people, right? And uh, most of them are cribbing, yaar, COVID kab khatam hoga, kab bahar niklenge. I, I hope everyone understands Hindi. In case you don't, let me just translate it for you because I know many of my students in class say, man, we don't understand Hindi. So there are lots and lots of people who talk about COVID and they say, God, absolutely in this particular house, in this one room and I'm going to move out. The satisfaction with your condition. You can't change it. You can't alter it. If you can, your quest should continue. But if you can't, what is important is that you make the 
best in that particular situation. That's the key learning where uh, Karan is concerned. If you take a look at leaders within organizations, many of them have knowledge. Many of them have the required skill set. In fact, it is said that the only person that Arjun should have been really scared of was Karan. Though, of course, Iravati gives a major age difference and all. I'm not getting into all that. But he was the only person that they should have been scared of. Fortunately, they had Krishna on their side, who was their mentor, who was their guide, and who kept leading them and moving ahead in just the right kind of way. So when you have knowledge, when you have skill sets, what is critical is that you apply them in the right context. If your understanding of the situation is not appropriate, what is going to happen is your movement in life. And when I'm talking about movement in life, I'm not only talking about the physical movement, I'm also talking about the mind. The mind space is not going to be at rest. It's going to be a major travail from one point to another point. So competency, yes. Knowledge, yes. Skill set, yes. But steeped in the right context. That is what can make a huge difference. So let's take a look. Oh, sorry. Okay, let's start. So Stephen Covey said, if the ladder is not leaning against the right wall, every step we take just gets us to the wrong place. It kind of sums up current life for us. The second R that we would be examining towards the end is, where leadership is concerned, there are times when you need to stop, you need to re-examine yourself before you decide to move ahead. Here comes the lady, Kunti. You might as well ask me why not Draupadi because I've also not taken Arjun. It's not because she was a wife of Arjun, so I've not taken her, but I feel Kunti has more substance to her than Draupadi. I could be wrong. My perspective could be different. Uh, she was, Draupadi was a Sakha of Krishna and a gorgeous woman who was able to take all her five men along with her. No one else would have been able to manage these five stubborn kind of people. She was the only one who was able to take them all and move ahead. But I think more important for us because of the paucity of time is to discuss Kunti, the mother queen. Some instances that come to mind, there could be, you know, other instances as well. The first instance that comes to my mind is, uh, you know, Kunti, when Arjun comes back home. Uh, Deepesh, Deepesh, you raised your hand. Uh, can we just wait because there's still content. I have three characters to finish. I will take the questions and uh, I hope Sanjay is not listening to us. Let's talk for another 15 minutes after five. So then we can take all the questions and let's talk about it. I've got into the flow. So let's just talk about these three characters and then tempo ne to gir jayega. Please, khatam karne do. Ab tempo mein aa gaye hain. So kunti, yeah. So there are three things, the three or four instances that come to mind. So the first thing that comes to mind is uh, when Arjun comes back home and he has Draupadi with her. And he says, okay, I'll do the translation in a minute's time. And he says, Ma, dekho mein kya laya? She says, look, mother, what I've got. And without turning around, she says, whatever you've got, distribute it amongst yourselves equally. When she looked around and she saw it was a woman, couldn't she have taken back her words? You know, during those times, you had all the sages, cursing left, right, center, and then just taking back the curse. Couldn't she have taken back her word? She didn't. She was pragmatic. She knew. She knew that 
Draupadi would be the only person who would be able to keep all these five men together. The bonding factor. The other instance that comes to my mind when we talk about Kunti is when she gives Madri the boon that she can also have sons. But she's smart, very smart. She gives Madri the boon for two sons only. If Madri had three sons or maybe four sons, what's going to happen is her position becomes lower than that of Madri. We're not going to debate or discuss, you know, whether boys are good and number of boys. I mean, boys are such rogues, if I may say so, right? So we'll not get into those details. But let's, for the time being, just consider this. She gives Madri the boon only to have two sons. And the third instance is uh, when, when uh, she goes, when she realizes that the Kauravas may become a little weight here because of the presence of Karn. So fast, it's so pathetic and that's why I love Karn. You know, he's been asking for everyone, who am I, who am I in search of identity? Not once does she open her mouth. Well, it's justified she doesn't open her mouth because, you know, her reputation's at stake. And she had her, uh, she had Karn before she got married. Absolutely justifiable. And then at this strategic moment, you know, you're talking about strategic thinking. She goes to Karn and she says, you can be the sixth son of mine. I begetted you. Now she's not bothered about consequences. It's not a consequentialist approach now. It is what we refer to her as opportunism. She's trying to look for that opportunity and she sees that opportunity in Karn. So uh, Karn and she goes and she thinks that probably he's going to finally agree to what she's saying. But this is not opportunism. This is just trying to, you know, cash in on the sentiments of someone else. But then by jolly, she is pragmatic. She's a woman who knows how to manage herself. She's a woman <coughs> who has her principles in most of the contexts absolutely intact. It's only in the case of current that we can say it was a little bit shaky, but overall, she's absolutely right. If she wanted, she could have stayed back in the court, but then she decides to go with her sons. Why does she do that? Why does she do that? She does that because she wants to be with them. She wants to be their mentor. She wants to be their guide. A good enough leadership trait. You know, it's something like uh, when the orchestra is being played, the person who's moving with the uh, person who's guiding the orchestra always has his back to the audience. This is what we refer to as an inside approach, outside in approach, you could refer to it. You know, recently there's been a lot of move where the corporate world is concerned, outside in or inside out. This inward looking, she's looking inward from outside, she's giving it a perspective. She's trying to manage the people inside. Don't we talk about, you know, employees, don't we talk about HR, talking about the employees being the most critical resource in an organization. Why do people talk about it? Yeah, they can always talk about profits being the most important in an organization. They can always talk about targets being the most important in an organization. They can talk about anything which is a, which relates to economical growth of the organization, but they don't. They talk about people, people development, people growth. This is inward looking. This is inward looking, and I think that's exactly where Kunti excelled. Of course, they were her sons. You can look back, look around and tell me. So it was a duty to be really, really good to her sons. Of course, I agree. I agree with you. But what we are trying to understand is, what is the leadership lesson that we can probably learn from Kunti? This is the point that I was trying to raise. A man who wants to lead the orchestra must turn his back on the crowd. 
For her, I would say the third R is reimagine. Now, another point I'd like to draw your attention to, I'm forgetting the name of the author and suddenly it comes to my mind, who talks about the, uh, where leadership is concerned, the four score win. Uh, if you just Google, you'll be able to get it. I'm forgetting the name of the author. I think it's Friedman, but I'm not very sure. So I will not uh, elaborate on that. So anyone can Google and just uh, let me know whether it's Friedman or not. So uh, he talks Howard about... Howard Sorry? Howard, Howard Schultz. Is it How Schultz? Howard Schultz is a CEO. Was a CEO of, uh, I think it's Starbucks. It's not Howard Schultz. It's a Harvard Business Review article, right? So, okay, uh, Sanjay, can you just help me out, please? Anyway, that's not important. You can Google. So the name is uh, Four Score Win. So you know, like uh, where uh, uh, he talks about leadership. When you're talking about leadership, there are four things that need to be kept in mind: the home, the society the work or the career and the self. Every time I look at Kunti, I think she has been able to demonstrate that beautifully. She was very good when you take a look at the home front, the family, when you take a look at society, how did she manage the people in the society? I think she was, she managed everything very, very well. She had foregone her career, but now her career was that of being the queen to, or the mother to all these sons and the daughter-in-law and the self. She looked after herself well and the satisfaction or the satiation of the self was by being able to address the other three uh, legs of a chair or whatever you want, you could call it. So where Kunti is concerned, I would like to say, reimagine the R that comes to the mind. When you're trying to take a look at leadership, the first thing that you need to do is you need to reimagine what is it that you would like to do? What is the target that you would like to achieve? And in achieving that target, remember that word which came out in the Mentimeter. What is your vision? That came out strongly. So if we were to talk about the vision, that should be clear in your mind what is it that you hope to achieve. Let's move on to this character, Ugg. But there's a major learning. There's a major learning and hence one of the reasons why I decided to get him because in today's world of scams and frauds and bribery and you name it, anything I think it's important us to consider Ashwatthama. <clears throat> so when you look at Ashwatthama, again, two or three narratives that come to the mind and there's a key learning, many key learnings that emerge on what not to do if you are really aspiring to becoming a level five leader. I'll talk about what level five leadership is all about. That's Colin's definition. So when you take a look at Ashwatthama, you know, he was a son of Drona. He was a son of Drona. And uh, for quite some time, there was this kind of controversy between Arjun and Ashwatthama as to, to whom had Drona imparted more skills. So Arjun, after some time, though he was a little silent about it, but he was under the impression Ashwatthama knew all the, uh, um, all the tricks of the trade. Conference is being recorded. But let us take a look at this man. He was a Brahmin. He was also not satisfied with his current situation. He wanted to be a Kshatriya. His father, Drona, had got Arjun to win part of the kingdom of King Drupad. Now, that's a huge story. I'm not going to get into it. King Drupad. And yet, part of that kingdom, he had aspirations of becoming the king over there. Aspirations are justified. No one made him a general in the war. On the 18th day, I think it was, or I could be a little mistaken, on the 18th day, when Duryodhan is about to die, he goes and gets himself anointed as a general. 
a Brahmin seeking that kind of success. That's one story. He goes and he talks to Duryodhan and his Duryodhan is hiding in that well and he reveals his place. But that of course could be an accident. But what he does, which is really bad, he enters into the Pandavas camp when everyone is sleeping. He kills everyone. This is not part of the Kshatriya Dhar. And then he knows the Pandavas will not leave him. He rushes to sage Vyasa scooter. That's the time when Krishna and Arjun also. You see, sir, conclave with Hodi Klai thi, yada. What's it? Okay, that's the time when Arjun and Krishna also reach over there. He takes out his Brahmastra, and Arjun also takes it out. Now, if the Brahmastra would have been released and they would have hit each other, the world would have collapsed. They, you know, it's something like a COVID, worse than COVID. Vyasa comes in between and he asks them to take back the Brahmastra. Arjun knows the technique. He does not know the technique. Ashwatthama, look at what he does. He directs it towards Uttara's womb. Krishna saves the child, but he curses him and says, you will become Chiranjivi, you'll never die. But there's gonna be a large gaping wound in the center of your forehead and you're gonna be moving around in the wilds. So if you go to Himalayas and you see a person moving around with a large gaping wound in the center of the forehead, you know it's Chiranjivi Ashwatthama. The key lessons of what should not be done where leadership is concerned is first, when you have skills and knowledge is limited, it's important, it's critical that you get complete knowledge before you can apply it to the rest of the people. What is important for you is at that particular moment that it's not only the intellectual capital which is important, but more important than that is empathy. That's another word that was used in that Mentimeter. Knowledge was also put in over there. Now, when we talk about empathy, we are not talking about, you know, put yourself in someone else's shoes. That's been said, heard so many times that you feel almost sick of it. But let's take a look at it from the point of view of Stephen Covey. He said, seek first to understand and then to be understood. Jealousy discontent with your current situation, aspiration for something for which you do not have the competency or the skill set, not possessing a vision where you need to uh, move, the direction in which you need to move is what will bring you to your end. So here where Ashatthama is concerned, uh, leadership is a potent combination of strategy and character. But if you must be without one, be without the strategy. When it comes to Ashwadhamma, I would say the leadership trait we would need to talk about is resuscitate and bring to life the last character. Unfortunately, I think we'll have to go a little fast, a little too fast where Krishna is concerned. Everything not good about Krishna, but still revered. Some of the stories that come to the mind where Krishna is concerned, he goes to Karna and tells him, if you go and you join the Pandavas, Draupadi will have to also accept you as a sixth husband. He coaxes Arjun when Arjun is getting cold feet to get to the center stage and to fight 
He is willing to break his vow and pick up weapons to fight the Kauravas the minute Arjun you know, gets cold feet and he says, I'm really not going to be able to fight. You know, here's a man who seemingly, seemingly did not have an ethical code of conduct. But by jolly, that would be a very, very shallow interpretation where Krishna is concerned. Krishna's understanding of the situation, his not remaining fixed on what it is that needs to be done, that is something like uh, Bhishma Pitama. Agar ye kehna, ye karna, I would just like to go ahead in that particular way. No, the flexibility in his code of conduct, his ability to mix pragmatism with principled approach. You know, he, he knew that he would be moving on a slippery slope if he was rigid, if he was not amicable. Something which Bhishma Pitama did not realize. He was the one person on whose shoulder, on whose shoulder rested the entire, I'm getting so many messages that I'm now really getting distracted, but just give me some time and then I'll go to the messages. So, you know, Krishna has a lot of things that, you know, uh, we would, it's important for us to understand. So if you take a look at the situation, and what are the choices that you have in that particular situation? And then map it on the action that needs to be taken. You would realize that it's easier for you to really take it forward. So let's just for a minute, you know, I've just put this off um, thing. And I'm just going to be talking to you about, uh, yeah. So what I wanted to say was, you know, when you take a look, at the situation, the choices and the actions. Just remember, where ethics is concerned, ethics is situational. But when you talk about ethics being situational, it is also based on values. Uh, Krishna's decision, decisions, any decision that you notice, they do not follow a pattern. They are simply what is appropriate for a given moment. He never saw any issue as pure good or e evil. He just thought it was an issue that needed to be resolved. And that's what makes the difference. Krishna said, Karmana ye va, uh, vadikaraste ma kareshu kadachan. I can't really uh, fale, fale shu, fale shu. Fale shu, fale shu kadachan. Let me give you the translation. It's not who you are on the inside. It's what you do that defines you. In fact, the Honorable uh, Justice of Supreme Court of India also said, a decision taken in good faith with good intentions without any extraneous considerations cannot be belittled. Even if that decision was ultimately proved to be wrong. Now, if we take a look at the learning from Krishna, the first thought that comes to the mind, whatever he did was never for his personal glory, but for the betterment of others. Whatever he did, he acted not for gain, but because what he thought was absolutely right. And that's what made all the difference. So let's kind of start summing it up. And I have a couple of points that I would like to share with you where Krishna is concerned. You cannot choose your battlefield. God does that for you. But you can plant a standard where a standard never flew. And that is what Krishna does. So the R for Krishna would be resilience. So when we talk about our students, uh, all the MBA students, they love all these mattresses. They love, you know, uh, anything which has to do something diagrammatically. So I thought, let me just now go ahead with it. If you take a look and we create this matrix where we have concern for tasks and concern for people, Ashwatthama falls lowest in both the categories. Krishna is highest in both the categories. 
now you know what are the basic leadership principles that we need to imbibe that Krishna is concerned. Bhishma, Kunti and Karan were more or less focused on task. A few key takeaways. Life is full of uncertainties. Make compromises and be flexible. Be creative and strategic in your thinking. Loss of smriti and consciousness of right and wrong can lead you to your doom. Search for your identity. Look for meaning in life. A dash of pragmatism mixed with principles is the final key to success. So if we were to end my talk, let's take a look at the five R model of leadership. Re-examine life, reimagine what could be the benefits, resuscitate to bring it back to life, bring reinvent to as great an extent as possible so that you are able to develop a resilience and you can demonstrate leadership. So now over to all of you for your questions. So let's have some quick questions. So I can see there was uh, mm, 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 mm. yes, there was one student. Uh, there was one student who was uh, who had a question. Prabal, Prabab. Uh, who had been raising his hand? I'm sorry, I can't see his hand now. Go up. Hello, ma'am. Why Krishna is known for dimension? Uh, who's that? Yes, Milan Thulitia, ma'am. Yes, tell me. Uh, why Krishna is known for uh, three dimension? Krishna is known as? Three dimension people. Three dimensional. All perspectives are there. Yes, ma'am. That's one of the reasons why he's known as three dimensional. Okay. He may also be referred to as five-dimensional, depending on which dimension you are talking about. He had almost everything within him. Maybe he knows uh, Just, Just one minute. Together with that, you know, he was one person in the entire Mahabharata. I did talk about level five leadership. What is level five leadership? Level five leadership is professional will coupled with personal humility. Nowhere in Mahabharat would you see Krishna come forth with the kind of arrogance associated with Karn, with the kind of arrogance associated with Drona or Arjun. He had his personal humility. There was a firmness in approach because whatever he did was for the good and right. Right? Let's have more questions. Thank you, ma'am. Ma'am, uh, as a millennial, uh, how can we develop the skills? Uh, who said that? Who's the millennial? Uh, None of uh, you. Like, I'm sorry. I am Ankit Nimani. Ankit, you are not a millennial, please. Millennial would be your younger brother. How old are you? Ankit, how old yeah, are you? you? I'm 21 right now. Okay, so you probably are, you do fall in that category, Ankit. So, yeah, okay. So, see, for millennials to develop this skill set, it's going to take time. See, please remember there's a difference between skill set, competency, and professionalism. So, when you're talking about a skill set, you know, what skill would you like to develop? See, for Arjun, it was archery. For Karan, it was also archery. Now, you would need to identify. And remember one thing, it's a tapasya. You know, what the millennials seem to be forgetting is they want everything in a rush. They want everything in a rush. So you don't have quick fix solutions, Ankit. You have to put in dedication. You have to put in work. You have to. You have to develop that kind of mindset where you say, okay, so I need to develop this skill set and then only would I be able to achieve something in life. All right. Yeah, that sounds good. Right. The other three participants. Good afternoon, ma'am. Hassan here. Hey, how are you? Long time no see. Yeah, I'm good, ma'am. How are you? Good, good. Yeah, tell me, Hassan. Yeah, I missed out on, you said that there are things that robs leadership. So, what are the points that you... Uh, see, we were talking about Ashwatthama. And that's the time when we talked about, you know, this is what really robs an individual of leadership. 
This is living in a world of uncertainty. What happens is you start desiring something. You will start desiring a position. You know, whether you are capable or you're fit for it or not. For that, you may also want to get into unethical means. This is for Krishna. Right? So what you have to uh, Hassan, do is you have to be very sure of what is it that you want. Remember, uncertainty is always going to be there. But clarity, to be clarity of thoughts, right? Focused approach. Focused. What is it that you're looking for? If you start moving around here and there, you're moving on slippery ground. Don't do that, Hassan. Ankit asked me a question. He's very young. Long ago. Ma'am, Ma one question, please. Yes, please. Uh, can you please uh, again? Can you please again explain uh, this quote? You can't choose your battlefield. God does that for us, uh, but you can plant a standard where a standard never flew. See, well, you see, this comes majorly, majorly from what uh, Sartre said, and there were other existentialists who talked oh. about it, and they said, you know, like you've been thrown in this world, right? And there's little that you can really do about it. So when you say you've been thrown in this world and what you're supposed to do is now you're supposed to live the way you want where life is concerned. So it's a battleground. Now here this person takes it a step further and says that it's like a battleground. But ideally what he's talking about is it's a world where you've been thrown and you have that kind of freedom to live life the way you want. A COVID example, Veklo. You know, we've been put in this particular situation where... Now we have to understand, do I set a standard for myself or do I not set a standard for myself? Right? So when right you're now. talking about that, you may decide to say, I couldn't care to hoots. There was this person, you know, who made this statement and he was moving around from one place to another. And he says, you know, things only happen to you if you're destined to get COVID, then only would you get COVID. And he had all these selfie shots. And then eventually he got COVID. Now this, I would say, is stupidity. So look at the battleground, set a standard so that people remember you because of your values that you went to the table. Ma'am, Abhinav. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Ma'am, Abhinav. Abhinav, come down. Hello. 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 Yeah, I can see a lot of my ex-students come forward. Dagan or Abhinav, who is there first? Ma'am, Abhinav, if you may allow. Yeah, ma'am, thanks a lot for this really insightful talk. Uh, just one, one takeaway. Uh, you showed the 5R uh, model of leadership. Yeah. If you see the five characters here, all had some gray elements to them. Right? right. But when, when we talk about in reality, is it, is it realistic to inculcate all these five virtues in an individual? Yeah, if you inculcate then your quest will come to an end. It's an ongoing process, Abhinav. Start. Start. You know, who, which of the leaders would you say, you know, has reached that pinnacle where he or she would say, I don't need to work more on my leadership trait. It's a Mom. quest. It's a journey. Ma'am, uh, can, can I present a question now? Yeah. Ma'am, this is Amit Verma from uh, JNU. Yeah, Amit. Uh, uh, hi, ma'am, and thank you for the session. Mama, I have a question. When, when we, you know, uh, talking about the his history and uh, when we compare it to the present scenario, I think, uh, you know, the situation is a bit different. But then uh, there is there there's a rule book. There is there are principles and there are like, you know ethics that we follow. But then, uh, you know, how pragmatic we need to be. As in like uh, seeing the current situation, we need to, uh, you know, mold ourselves or should we see it from, uh, from the point of view of a long run? How do, how do we do it, actually? Uh, you know, Amit, one thing we'll have to keep in mind, there's a difference. There's a difference between following the rule book and being principled, right? So now in any, for instance, you take a look at the defense services, right? So they have it in the rule book that whatever the lieutenant says, the rest of the people are supposed to follow or whatever be the hierarchy. They're supposed to be following that and... There are no questions involved over there. Now, if you're talking about the rule book, what we're really talking about is that these are the rules that have been laid down in jolly well followed laws. But when we're talking about principles, <clears throat> that's a totally different ballgame altogether. I develop my set of principles and you develop your set of principles. They may match. They may converge at a later stage. They may not converge. 
So for someone, you know, uh, telling a lie could be a heinous crime. For someone, a white lie is absolutely acceptable. So everyone would need to carve out their principles and then follow those. There are certain things, they are universal truths. Let's not get caught with the universal truths. Universal principles. For instance, shooting a man or killing a man is wrong. Hello. Hello. Ma'am, uh, sorry. 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 Hello. The last Hello. Five Hello. 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 Sorry. Sorry. Hello. 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 Yeah. Uh, good evening, ma'am. This is Murugan yeah. Kandaswamy from Chennai. Hi, Murugan. How are you, ma'am? Good, good. And you? Uh, I am doing great. Thank you very much, ma'am. Uh, my question, my question to you is that, uh, uh, no, what skill set that the current leader should learn from Karna? Uh, from Karn, the skill set that would be required is your competency. Whatever you do. You should be very, very competent for learning. You may go to any extent to be able to develop that skill set. Right? He was willing to go. You should have an element of generosity within you. And what you should learn from Karan is not to do, not to get caught up in that quest for who am I. So the major learnings where Karan is concerned, right? Live the present for the present. Look, Murugan, I'll just tell you, you know, researchers, what they've talked about. See, yes. managers uh, in today's world, they seem to be moving between, shuttling between power and trust. And they say, you know, should I develop more power or should I have more trust of the people? What they fail to understand is, and that is where current circus also comes in, that, you know, you can govern the people today because of your power yesterday. But you can build their trust tomorrow because of what you do today. So a Karn is concerned, because of his power, he was able to also become a general. Um, Ma'am, sort of here. I have a question on this on the same line. So usually, when we aspire in corporate world for a particular position or a designation, in future when we see that we are not getting that position, although we believe that we deserved it, how do we, do we determine that the that actually we deserved it or it was just our in our head that uh, we deserved that designation? ये तो सारे मेरे पास आप कम्युनिकेशन क्लास में हम लोग डिस्कस करेंगे इसको कि कैसे इसको टेक फॉरवर्ड कर सकते हैं देयर आर मेनी टाइम्स इट हैपेंस नो मैम मैम दिस इज गोपी कृष्ण पालेकर सारो 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 आई वांट टू कम बैक हेलो यस मैम सारो इट हैपेंस इन एवरीवनस लाइफ सो व्हाट इज इंपॉर्टेंट इज फॉर यू टू अंडरस्टैंड फॉर यू टू आइडेंटिफाई यू नो हाउ इंपॉर्टेंट इज दैट प्रमोशन विद अ वी द चॉइसेस दैट यू हैव टू मेक right so okay. depending on the situation you will make your choice accordingly so if it is critical for you so either you understand the perspective of the other and you move in that direction or you fight it out there are only two ways in which you can take it forward mm -hmm. there's no third way right sir uh, but you right. need to also understand how important is it to you at a particular stage mm -hmm. okay hello ma'am thank you so much ma'am ma i have a question hello ma'am questions last three questions are there marlin hai i hear a uh, yes hey hi um good to see you again ma'am uh, i just wanted to ask, sorry priyanka pleasure is mine yeah महाभारत Here we go. The story I've told so many times in my classes. So the others who are going to be there are going to switch me off, right? Tune off. But I think you need to be told the story, right? 
So if people can remember this story, then probably they'd be able to move ahead. So if anyone says task oriented, task oriented, tell them this story, right? So it happened during uh, the war that was going on Mahabharat. And on one side, there was Krishna and Arjun, or I should say Arjun with Krishna, you know, as a charity. On the other side, there was Karn. Every time Karn would shoot an arrow, Arjun's wrath would go back by 10 or 15 feet. Every time, sorry, by two or three feet, and every time Arjun would shoot an arrow, Karn's wrath would go back by 10 or 15 feet. So it's three or four feet and 10 and 15 feet. Finally, Krishna looks at Karn and says, wow, wow, it's something like, wow, buddy, wow. He keeps doing that. Krishna keeps doing that. Finally, Arjun can bear it no longer. He looks at Krishna and says, look at what that man is doing and look, look at what I'm doing. Every time he shoots, my wrath goes only two or three feet back. And every time I shoot, his wrath goes back by 10 or 15 feet. And then Krishna gives him this gyan. Mm, he says, on your wheels, you have Sheshnag. On the top of your chariot, you have Hanumanji, monkey god. And in your chariot, you have God himself. If he is still able to push back your chariot by jolly, he does have competency. Focus more on the man. Focus more on what he is doing rather than remaining focused on the task at hand. So if you remember this story, it's going to be easier for you to take it forward. However, having said that, remember, companies have their targets. Companies have their goals. Being focused on being people-oriented should not make you lose sight of what your targets are, what your goals are, right? So last three questions, I've been saying last three Madam, questions. Madam Chandrasekhar here. Oh, Chandrasekhar, and Madam. then we have two more after that. Yes, yes. Um, Naren, can Madam, I, I have a question. Chandrasekhar, then Naren, and one more person. Um, I have a question. Please allow me one question. Yes, yes. I have Madam, I'll go here. My, my question is, uh, don't you think that when uh, Krishna asked Arjuna to shoot a arrow to Karna, he ethically was not correct and he told uh, Arjuna to make a wrong thing? I like the best. Shekhar, that's a wonderful question that you raised. I was hoping someone would ask me about it. So this is a time when his uh, uh, chariot, the wheel gets stuck in that wet soil of blood, right? And then he's pleading. I think that's the instance that you're talking about. See, what he does, and that's why we talk about Krishna as being the master strategist. You know, at that time, it was very easy to get swayed away by emotions, right? But what he does is he keeps Arjun on track. He talks about all the ills that Karan has done. He talks about him killing Abhimanyu. You know, it's not that you can let the person go scot-free just by being principled. And that is when we talk about, you know, being a combination of principles and pragmatism. I felt bad for Karn. Maybe you also felt bad for Karn. But that is not the learning that needs to be taken back with you. The learning is principles are important. They are always at the core of leadership. But then they have they have to be covered with pragmatism. Next, Narendra, and then we have yeah. talked. Yeah. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, uh, thank you for your uh, nice talk. Uh, one more, ma'am. One more. One more with me. No, Narendra. Now we have to have Narendra and one more question. Yeah. Yeah. Narendra. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. I'm just borrowing your words that you said in your uh, talk. Karmanen vade ka raste ma faleshu kadachana. Thank you so much. You did it so effortlessly. So effortlessly. Lord. Lord Krishna says, thank you. Lord Krishna says that your right is in action only and not in fruits. How do we apply this thing in our real life? You know, what, Without fruit, can we keep on doing the actions? 
you know what you without done? expectations for the fruits can we keep on doing the actions great narendra what you've done is you've put your hand in the hornet's nest you know more or less it takes us back to this eternal question which is still not being answered and the question is the do end justify means or do means justify end so uh, machiavelli who wrote the prince had raised this question and you know there, there seems to be no answer where this is concerned so where krishna is concerned he says what you need to do is you need to be a little careful of only your means and not the ends the ends will follow whatever you are trying to do now machiavelli has a totally different perspective so what i would Yes, I mean, like, of course, we are talking about Krishna and we are saying, "Hari ki chinta mat karo." But if you remember, we talked about Purushar, right, right in the beginning. And what I stated was there was also moksha. What is moksha? Actually, you reach a spiritual level. No, I'm not asking you to reach that spiritual level. There has to be this expectation, and I think it is absolutely justified. But <clears throat> this is, you know, symptomatic. of the action and the thinking process that you need to follow your thinking should be crystal clear your principles should be well thought out so what happens is if your thinking is good your principles are good your actions will automatically be a reflection of your principles asha may i add something here thank if you, you wish to follow thank you it is the supremacy of intellect over mind sanche yes Uh, Asha, in terms of management, according to me, it's very, uh, very uh, simple. Uh, in case there is a clear-cut relationship between cause and effect, measure cause, forget about effect. It will come automatically because there is a very clean, clear relationship. Uh, if you are focusing on innovation, uh, look at outcomes, not uh, process. If you are focusing on standardization, standardization, focus on process, not output. At any point of time, always remember your boundary conditions, which is in. order to achieve goal what you are not going to do that's your boundary condition follow process do whatever you wish to but never violate your boundary conditions if you take care of all these three life is very simple otherwise you will always get lost in all this thanks sanjay that was brilliant thank you so much thank you so much the last question one more question one more question with me ma'am one more question you already had an opportunity once please let's give opportunity to someone else hello ma'am this is sajal here hi Okay. Yeah, ma'am. Uh, my question is uh, in the current uh, situation that we are facing, where there is a lot of downsizing. Everybody is asked to take a salary cut, and people are getting fired. And we are being asked to fire our team, downsize our team. Uh, how do we find our purushat here? Uh, how do we know what is our dharma? Do we take the business priorities first, or with the human consideration, look after the, look after the people? So this is the dilemma we are facing every day in this situation. Yeah. So this is again a very interesting question when you're talking about purushat and you say you know how do I really go ahead? Do I take focus on uh, uh, the art that is the economic aspect of it, or do I take a look at what is righteous, what is not righteous? Now, see, the righteousness is also concerned. We're talking about it. There are two aspects. One is uh, the moral righteousness, and the other is the organizational righteousness. I have a very simple way which will probably help you decide what needs to be done. What is simple? A process here. Uh, you know, people might uh, kind of say, "Ki isko kya karna?" See, whenever you're doing something and you are in doubt, stand in front of the mirror and talk to yourself about it, about whatever is going to be the solution that you're going to absorb or take. If you cannot meet your eyes at that time, don't follow that solution. If you can meet your eyes, go ahead, and you will be a success. Let me elaborate a little on it. Your family is facing some kind of economical, uh, some kind of monetary problems, hypothetical, hypothetical situation. If you decide to follow your morals and be people-oriented, you would say, "I'm not going to fire them." As a result of which, you will be fired. How would you really be able to carry on with sustenance? the entire family is dependent on you that's not taking on a very pragmatic approach go and talk to yourself in the mirror tell the mirror your problems the solution will emerge so now when we talk about it it has to be put in perspective the right perspective taken in the broader broader kind of uh, box which is filled with other life problems life issues and then you just proceed move ahead 
you will realize that you've been able to make the right choice and making the right choice is critical for everyone. Right? So Sanjay, on that note, I think we need to close today's session. It's already 5.30. Thanks to everyone who attended. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. 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 Thank